Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. On this special season of Washington Grown, we're following Washington produce around the world. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, there's just stuff happening everywhere. Breakfast, Breakfast lunch, lunch, or dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm doing yeah. all, all the work over here. <laughs> That's a Tomas Deluxe. All good things are better shared, right? Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> I can't even walk. <laughs> we got a lot to explore and a lot to do, so let's get to it. <laughs> to Washington. To Washington. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. Whether it's potatoes in English, papas in Spanish, or hoi thai in Vietnamese, Washington Grown potatoes are delicious. Today we're exploring the many different ways you can use them in all kinds of dishes. I'm learning what kinds of potatoes are best to make potato chips. We don't want like a, a massive no. potato chip in a bag, right. you know, because of, whoa, I can't Although eat that in my mouth. Although it might be kind of fun. Yeah. And I'm making Malaysian curry at Reunion Malaysian Cafe and Kitchen in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's a kick to it though. Yep, just a little bit. <laughs> you can handle it. I can handle it. Then I'm cooking a special potato dish with a five-star chef in Mexico City. And personally, I found from the Seahawks, in Washington, so... <laughs> go Hawks! Yeah, go Hawks! <laughs> All this and more today on Washington Grown. Right here in the heart of Kirkland, there's a little restaurant bringing huge flavors to the table. Reunion Malaysian Cafe is giving guests a special experience of Malaysian culture through food. Although the aromatic spices and delectable dishes are the reason to walk through the door, the reason to stay is more about the family you'll find inside. Well, I love the people who work here. They're very nice. So you don't feel like an average client, you feel like your family? They're just wonderful people and customer service is great and always very welcoming. So you are a regular here? Yes, most every day. <laughs> every time I come here, I say, boss, I'm hungry. He just made, made my food. <laughs> Reunion is essentially, it's the gathering for everyone. Have great food and have great conversation. You know, that's all Reunion is all about. Owner and chef Robert Ju feels blessed to live in Washington because of all the amazing produce grown right here. To him, fresh fruits and vegetables are the perfect complement to the unique Malaysian flavors he loves. We use a lot of Washington produce and fruits throughout the year. Cherries and berries during the summer, mm -hmm. and then during the fall time, you get apples and pears. Yeah. And you get your shallots, your onions, your potato especially. Yeah. It's good for all our dishes. Don't miss later in the show when Chef Robert and I make Reunion's special Malaysian vegetable potato curry. I could eat this all day. The best way to watch Washington Grown is to get in your comfy pajamas and snuggle up with a big bag of potato chips. But where do these chips come from? And how do they go from spud to our favorite salty snack? Today, I'm meeting up with Derek Davenport of Allied Potatoes to find out how the magic happens. You no, know, our potatoes are used for chip processing. So all your potato chips uh, that we ship to for free to lay and kettle. And we also export quite a few of our potatoes overseas, whether it's Asia or Central America. So just potato chips everywhere. Yeah, good quality potatoes are easy to sell. What makes a good chipper potato? The low sugar content, good quality, the roundness and the size, the friability, the color, all those things are great for being fried into a chip, made into a french fry, mashed potatoes, however they want to cook the potato. Next, Derek took me to the processing facility where chipping potatoes are cleaned and sent to the processors to be made into chips. The truck is loading outside. They go through the washing process, clean all the soil off. By the time they get to here, they're looking for any maybe rocks from the field, maybe any potatoes that are broken or defected, and they're pulling those out, and they're throwing these other bins, and all the good potatoes are gonna go this way, okay. and they'll get shipped off to the plants to be processed into potato chips. Awesome. Do you have any idea about how many potatoes come through 
your facility on a daily basis? A lot. So <laughs> a semi load is about 25 to 30 tons. Okay. And we can run 25 to 30 semis through here in a day. Wow. That's a lot of potatoes. Yeah. Does size matter with uh, chipping potatoes? It does, yeah. You, you don't want a large potato in a, in a chip bag. You know, you want something within a medium size range where a, a person yeah. can eat a size of a chip. Get in your mouth. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We don't want like a, a massive no. potato chip in a bag, right. you know, because like, whoa, I can't Although eat that in my mouth. it might be kind of fun. Yeah. One time. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the potatoes can get a little bit large and we peel off the bigger potatoes and those go to uh, food distribution centers where they'll get okay. made into restaurant business they'll make them into mashed potatoes french fries or whatever so no potato goes to waste no potato goes to waste exactly this is our uh, quality control lab okay we'll cut them open we'll fry them in here so basically we can't see it right now mm -hmm. but there's a certain amount of sugars within these potatoes too much of sugars will cause a dark fry okay and the lower the sugar content will show a a good white fry, mm -hmm. so that's exactly what we're looking that's for. That's what you want. We'll try and reenact basically how that processing plant will fry them up. Sure. Only thing here is we don't get to put them in a fancy bag and yeah. have all the good flavors that they have. Yeah. Still a little hot. <laughs> you think? Yeah. You know when they say, oh, you once you start, you can't stop? Yes. Yum. What are the chances? that if I buy a bag of chips, that it's from Washington potatoes? I would say in the realm of the 90%, not just from our farm, but there's other chip growers within Washington state that ship to these plants as well. And so the odds are very, very high that you're getting local potatoes in these bag of chips. That's what we love. <laughs> <laughs>
And the potatoes. That's easy That's to really do. Easy. You can really do it easy to do. Really easy to do. Anytime at home. Yeah. Everything's in the product, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we should have a little toast. Thank you, Chef sure. Diego. Thank you, guys. Thank you. To Washington. To Washington. Washington. Coming up, I'm making Malaysian curry at Reunion Malaysian Cafe and Kitchen in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's a kick to it, though. Yep, just a little bit. <laughs> you can handle it. I can handle it. We're back at Reunion Malaysian Cafe in Kirkland. Although many guests may walk in with very little knowledge about Malaysian tastes and dishes, they always leave with a full belly, a big smile, and a plan to come back hungry to try more. I refer all my clients here, and they're always like, hey, what's, what's that, what's Malaysian? Yeah. So everyone that have, has come here and tried it, they all like are a big fan Malaysian of the place. Food. If you're just looking to get a try of Malaysian food, this is the place to come to. Malaysian food is a fusion of many influences, okay. like the Malays, the Chinese, the Indians, and other indigenous groups. Owner and chef Robert Ju loves Malaysian cuisine because of its unique place in the history of Asia. He and his wife want to allow their guests to experience Malaysian culture through their menu. People came from many regions in the world mm -hmm. to Malaysia. So with the spice root, you get all the spices and you get a blend of locals mixing their own concoction of yeah. spices and there you go, you got Malaysian cuisine. There you go. Yeah. It reflects the cultural heritage of Malaysia and its diverse people. So that. come try it, yeah. you know, you'll like it. The food is amazing, a great family that owns it. Fresh and healthy and delicious. I mean, I haven't tried everything on the menu quite yet, so I'll get there though. What are you and I going to make today? We are going to make the Malaysian vegetable curry today. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. have potatoes in it. Potatoes, bright, beautiful, awesome. and delicious. <laughs> Why russet potatoes for It's this? creamy, it's great, and it's got a very good texture to it. The texture. Mm -hmm. Texture is everything. everything. With curry, yeah, with right? Curry, right. Okay. We start by sautéing some red onions, shallots, garlic, and ginger. So we have Washington potatoes. Are there other Washington ingredients that we're working Actually, with today? Actually, these are all from Washington. Really? Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So this is considered like one of the true Malaysian, Malaysian dish. Yeah, your everyday go-to meal. That's what this is. Okay, yes. so it's just something that you would eat every day, though. Every day. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Really? The real flavor of the dish comes in the spices. And let me tell you, there are a whole lot of spices. There was toasted cumin, cardamom, cloves, coriander seed, bay leaves, curry powder, ginger powder, salt, turmeric, and cayenne powder. Oh, that was a lot of cayenne you put in there. Turmeric. No? Just a little. It's just a little? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is our special Ooh. and very secret ingredient. Yes, tell me about this. This is our homemade curry paste. Yeah, smells wonderful, right? It does. It smells That's really good. light. You can really smell the lemongrass. Lemongrass. Yeah. yeah. You can smell it. It's all coming together. A <laughs> little and bit of cayenne. cayenne. Yeah, yeah. it's hitting me. Right. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay. Pretty simple at this point. I know. Well, that's good. Simple Everything is, in. Simple is good. <laughs> yeah. We add some vegetable broth, bell peppers, carrots, tomatoes, and finally the potatoes. This is my kind of dish. Breakfast, Breakfast, lunch, lunch or dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> we let the curry simmer for 15 minutes, then finish it off with some coconut milk. You brought out a couple of different types of bread. bread. So explain what these are. These are the garlic naan bread. Garlic naan. Mm -hmm. And we have the roti canai right there. It's a crispy flat bread, almost croissant-like. Look at all those great vegetables. Yeah. Careful, it's going to go all over. Mm. It's delicious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's a kick to it, though. Yep, just a little bit. <laughs> you can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Spicy, creamy. Mm -hmm. I love how the potatoes just kind of absorb the beautiful color and the flavor. From the turmeric, from the peppers. But this is like This is buttery. crispy. Yeah, crispy, okay. buttery. It's got that uh, honeycomb layer in between. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. I could eat this all day. I feel warm inside and happy. To get the recipe for this Malaysian vegetable potato curry, go to wagrown.com. Coming up, I'm in Vietnam trying out some delicious Washington fries. One, two, three, cheers! Yeah. <laughs> and we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying Chef Laurent's orange sesame glazed potatoes.
Here in Vietnam, products are sold in many different ways. Now, while it's easy to think that all Vietnamese shoppers go to outdoor markets, that's actually not the case. That's why today I'm in Megamart in Ho Chi Minh City talking to a very familiar face. All right, everybody, it has been 10 years on Washington Grown and I've never had the opportunity to interview Mr. Chris Voigt from the Potato Commission. So I had to come and follow him all the way to Vietnam ah, in order to make it happen. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Vietnam. I know. Welcome to Washington Potatoes. It's totally Kinda cool to come into a big store like this and to see the state of Washington represented yeah. all over this place. Very and exciting. how cool is it to walk in and see our potatoes on display. <laughs> oh, I know. And Vietnam is such a cool country. I mean, yeah. it's, it's such a spectrum of everything from, you know, supermarkets like we're here to the wet markets yeah. and being able to see our products there in both places is pretty fascinating. So how do these potatoes even get here in the first place? Right. Well, you start out in the Skagit Valley. This is double end potatoes. And it's an interesting story because Jerry, who's the farmer who grew these potatoes that I'm holding right here, actually served in the war in Vietnam. Okay. And now he's selling his potatoes here. He thinks that's pretty cool. So these potatoes started in Washington State. We trucked them down like from Mount Vernon to the ports of Tacoma. Is actually okay. where it got onto a ship there. Right. Went straight to, I think, Singapore and offloaded in Singapore, got put onto a smaller ship okay. and came here to Ho Chi Minh City. This was in cold storage there. Went to the distributor, uh, Tony Fruits, the name of the company. Yeah. Uh, and they make the rounds and distribute it to the grocery store here. So it's uh, quite a journey, uh, like 75, 100 miles. Ah, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm the head of regional for MM Vietnam. Paul makes sure everything at Megmart is clean, fresh, and stocked. As a customer service worker, his biggest joy is serving the shoppers. I've been here since 2010. That is about 12 years. 12 years? 12 years in this business. So you like your job, right? Oh, of course, I love it. <laughs> Why do you love it so much? It's all, always in the front line of the uh, consumer. Right. You serve customer. That's what I love to do. Do you like Washington Apple? Yes, yes. We love Washington Apple. Are Apple they a big seller here? Big seller. Big seller. <laughs> Daily and Apple keep the doctor away. <laughs> I like that. You're yeah, right. And Apple yes, Day, exactly. The away. What about the Washington potatoes? Are those pretty good uh, too? Yes, that is uh, in growing trend. It's in a good growing trend. Besides our own uh, Vietnam potato, US potato is also the choice. For Vietnamese. Now Vietnam actually grows potatoes, okay. but they can only grow roughly about 50% of what they consume, so they have to import food okay. from other countries. Okay. And so that's an opportunity for us to really kind of bring, uh, you know, these really vibrant reds and purples and yellow potatoes, where that's not necessarily the case here. I mean, if you were to show, showcase them side by side, you could definitely tell which one's from Washington <laughs> State and, and which one's from, were from Vietnam. How does it make you feel to come into a country like Vietnam and to see Washington potatoes and the logo all over the place. Yeah, you know, there's, there's kind of a sense of pride, right? Seeing Washington potatoes here, I, I mean, I'm used to seeing them in Washington grocery stores, right? <laughs> yeah, Washington right. State. But coming to Vietnam or Singapore or Taiwan yeah. and see our potatoes on the shelves, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It makes me cool. really proud of our farmers back home. You guys are doing a great job getting products all over the world, and, and I can't wait to see what country we end up in next for my next interview with you. <laughs> I know, let's let's shoot for somewhere like tropical. I love it, Chris. Thank All you right, so man. much. Great seeing you, buddy. Whether shopping at a store like Mega Mart or a more traditional wet market, one thing is clear. Vietnamese consumers care about getting fresh, high-quality products. And as more and more shoppers move away from outdoor markets and into stores, it's easier than ever for amazing Washington products to get into the hands of customers. My name is Chi, and I'm the head of marketing at Le Square. La Square focuses on high-end products for its customers. Every single item has been quality tested so that shoppers know anything they get is going to be great. Uh, we have you new know, selected products coming from France, Italy, the US, uh, New Zealand and other countries and also some of the very unique Vietnamese products are being selected and to be distributed here in, in the store. I see, so you're very picky though about what you choose to bring into the store, it's very high-end. Uh, it's actually it's quite high-end. We yeah. aim to high-end quality product. Everything uh, quite going through a lot of uh, process in order to pick the most or the best products to sell it to end consumer. Hello, I'm Mene Min Thi. Currently, I'm the marketing department at the New Viet Dairy. New Viet Dairy is an importer and distributor here in Ho Chi Minh City. They put all sorts of products onto shelves in Vietnam, and one item you might recognize is these Washington-grown french fries. Uh, when talking about the frozen french fries, the people think about the Lawson with very nice appearance. It's the crispy outside, in the inside it does a lot of stuff. We are working with many suppliers around the world, around 30 countries. 
Oh wow. Yes. Yeah. And we distribute to the more than 6,000 active customers nationwide. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're honored that uh, Washington potatoes are here. Yes. In your store. When talking about the quality, people still uh, choose the lowest standards. Of course, I'd never doubt Washington fries, but just in case, we had to do a taste test. Purely for science, of course, not because I wanted to eat some fries. Hello, oh, here we are. Oh, thank you. These look delicious. <laughs> yeah, smell very good. Yes, yes, I will. Nice and crispy on the outside and nice and fluffy yeah. on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's very long. No, that's a very long one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like to eat fries? We like this kind of thickness mm -hmm. because the people here, they used to eat very thin ones, mm -hmm. but when they come to the square, they have a thicker one. And mm -hmm. this makes it very special. Young customers right. love this. Right. Yeah. These are great. Mm. Just like home. One, two, three. Cheers! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love it too. We are in the kitchen at Second Harvest here in Spokane, and I am joined by my wonderful tasters, uh, Chef Laurent Zarati and Tomas Guzman. Hello, we're, here we are again. I know, in Second Harvest, and this is actually like their teaching kitchen, and yes. you have taught some classes here. Yes, exactly, a few yeah. years ago, yes. They bring folks in who Beautiful may not here. know exactly how to use the food that they're receiving exactly. from Second Harvest, and it just shows them, you know, how to make a good roasted potato or... Perishable food, yeah, yeah, you need to use it. Absolutely. That's a staple. Yeah, I mean, it is. Potatoes are so limitless. We could do anything we want oh with them, God. whether it's sweet or savory, yeah. it's an incredible ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> in this episode, we are looking at something very uh, common now in household. We decided to do a recipe with an air fryer. I don't know okay. if you own an air fryer. Oh, I, I do have an air fryer. I, I do as well, yeah. I, you see? The we three use of it us, often, we, yeah. All the time. For two, it's the best oven you can buy, I think. We did those potatoes to make them a little crispier yeah. than regular. And uh, we are going to toss them with a, a beautiful sauce that you can use uh, for other things. Yeah. If you don't want that recipe, that's fine, just use the potatoes as potatoes, mix mm -hmm. them with garlic or whatever you want, oh, whatever yes. you like. Nice. And you can use the sauce for a fish, for anything else, a, a cooked chicken or... Awesome. So always think, uh, you know, beyond the recipe. Well, crispy potatoes are one of my favorite things Good. in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, I, that is the truth, so I can't wait to see how we make them. Let's do it.
not what I expected. I didn't realize it was like an Asian inspired it is. potato dish. Yes, so, yes, yes. Orange, orange soy sesame glaze. Oh, yeah. And that's that's where you can use it for something yeah. else. A little bit of, of spice, yeah. huh? but not mm -hmm. too much. A touch, not yeah. much. There's some but it has pepper a good, flakes. A good tang to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a nice it's, little bite. And that orange comes through too. It's very fragrant. We always think about rice. Huh? Yeah. When we eat Asian, with, which is, you know, Korean, Japanese, uh, Chinese, mm -hmm. Vietnamese. Well, think about rice, but they do cook potatoes. Yeah. Right. A lot of potatoes. You, you yeah. saw that in Vietnam. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. These are delicious. I can I mean, I even see delicious. throwing in pineapple in this. Like green put some green onions. Yeah. Green onions. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Laurent. Yeah. Well, you're very welcome. Really nice. fun to try. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. good, so, good. And if you want to try it, you can only find these recipes on wagroom.com. That's great. Yes, as developed by Chef Laurent. So check it out. Yep. It's if it's good, good. Yep. make some your own. <laughs> if it's not good, blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be good. Right, it's going to be good. <laughs> to get the recipe for Chef Laurent Zerati's orange sesame glazed potatoes, visit us at wagroom.com. In curry, poutine, or just baked with butter, there are so many ways to enjoy Washington grown potatoes. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time.